Through the novel's core relationship between its two major characters, the man and the boy, McCarthy explores ideals of responsibility and authority in a world gone mad. A poignant aspect of the novel is the horror of cannibalism, which shows depravity of humans which, when a veneer of society is removed. Furthermore, the ethics the man and the boy follow, which keep up with a society they have outlived and the security, comfort they feel by keeping up with them. In this essay, we would like to examine the deeper ethics of consumption below the surface of the novel and explore the idea that the road tells us a lot more about current society than might be noticed on a casual reading. This can be seen through the prevailing theme of consumption, which is an undercurrent throughout the story. A recurring motif in the text is that of oil and crude oil-derived products. The novel is filled with examples of the man and the boy either surviving directly due to gas and oil products, or unconsciously following the patterns of their previous society. That is to say, consuming and over-consuming something that is inherent, inherently limited. The scene in which the boy accidentally leaves the cap of their gas burner serves as a powerful metaphor for the misuse of gas by humans and the frivolous nature of storing precious materials. In this way, McCarthy, for his post-apocalyptic narrative, critiques modern society and our dependence on fossil fuels. The man's affinity for his map and for roads thus suggests his complicity with the engines of US capitalism and nationalism. Lydia Cooper, in her essay, Cormac McCarthy's The Road and the Anglo-Irish Gothic, argues that the road is replete with images of consumption, from evocations of a fossil fuel-driven economy to depictions of cannibalism. The form of consumption, most commonly employed as a shorthand for unchecked cultural depravity, or the breakdown of civilised society altogether. This helps demonstrate McCarthy's vision for the novel and what he can tell us about how we live now and the result's current socio-economic system, which is entirely dependent on crude oil and the money that fossil fuel entails. It is no accident that the novel is titled The Road and our two protagonists follow the network of the previous American society's roads, with the aid of an oil company map to help them plot their journey. The man and the boy take solace and direction from his map and travel on roads designed to transport goods within the same socio-economic system. This shows that even a world that for him was not even a memory, a father and son cannot escape their dependence on the fossil fuel economy and the system that it props up. In the story, a driving force is the need to consume food. Matthew Mullins emphasises this in his essay Hunger and the Apocalypse of Modernity in Cormac McCarthy's The Road. The man and the boy are forced by their stomachs to take risks, play it safe, and to be both selfish and generous. Hunger endangers their lives and just as often saves them. The idea of being forced to act by your stomach is a very powerful one and reveals concepts embedded in the road that your free will can be compromised by your baser instincts. The struggle for characters in the novel is between staying true to their morals and satiating their primal desires for food and shelter. A pivotal part of the novel is where the man and the boy take a risk because of starvation and investigate a house that turns out to be occupied by cannibals. The two are starving in the prior scenes and their drive for consumption fuels this mistake directly. Hunger, then, is a whip hand for the man and the boy, spurring them both to search for food but in the process put themselves in danger. Their natural instincts for self-preservation are overruled by their drive to consume. In the novel, the question of consuming other beings directly is raised. The most direct example would of course be the repeated instances of cannibalism described in the novel in gruesome detail. Through this horrible act of consumption, McCarthy questions the ethics of human existence. In the novel, humans survive by living off consuming others. But given the backdrop of American consumer society that is present in the novel, it could be argued that McCarthy is making a point about the entropic nature of modern-day capitalism. This inherent predatory nature of past societies is critiqued through the, through the depiction of the cannibal society in the novel. Behind them came wagons drawn by slaves in harness and piled with goods of war, and after that the women, perhaps a dozen in number, some of them pregnant, and lastly, a supplementary consort of catamites, ill-clothed against the cold and fitted in dog collars and yoked each to each. This hierarchical structure of cannibals can be seen as analogous to modern society's capitalistic labour market, 
which similarly compartmentalizes humans according to their value in the system of production and consumption. The boy and the man are the moral antithesis of the cannibals. They refuse to even entertain the possibility of eating other humans and are repulsed by the idea due to their strong moral code. The boy and the man continue to believe in the ethical standards of the man's previous society, exemplified by the conundrum they face when the man attempts to trap a wild dog that they encounter. He looked at the dog and he began to cry and to beg for the dog's life, and I promised I would not hurt the dog. This scene questions our moral standards when we eat other beings. McCarthy very cleverly uses a dog rather than any other animal, as we consider dogs man's best friend, and we generally do not see it as right to kill a dog to eat. The boy in this scene acts as our moral compass, even suggesting that the dog might catch something for them to eat. Interestingly, the boy proposes an alternative to simply killing for consumption. He argues that cooperation in the long run will result in more food. In this way, the boy could be said to represent the values of a new and more hopeful society than the one from which his father comes. In this context, the boy even seems to be a champion of a more moral consumption. He does not want to seem to kill at all, let alone harm another person. The boy's moral compass is so strong that it overrides any selfish impulse he might have. This can be seen clearly in the scene where the boy pleads with the man to give back the thief's clothes. He was just hungry, Papa. He's going to die. The boy is unwilling to let even someone who has wronged him die, and therefore acts as the moral anchor for his father. In this way, McCarthy raises the question whether consumption for survival can be moral, and the extreme situations the man and the boy encounter reveal them to exemplify the two polarities of this argument. We can see these two characters' priorities through a crucial quote. You're not the one who has to worry about everything. He looked up, his wet and grimy face. Yes, I am, he said. I am the one. Here, McCarthy skillfully depicts the worldviews of the man and his son. We see that the roles of the authoritative survivor and the ethical paragon. The father prioritizes survival, but the boy prioritizes morals. Whereas the father is a figure who exemplifies survival through consumption, the boy represents someone whose code surpasses his instinct for survival. Matthew Mullins reiterates this with, In this novel, there are ultimately three types of people. Those who consume each other, those who are consumed, and those who insist on equitably pass passing out what meagre goods remain. The boy and the man, however, do share aspects of a moral code. Represented in the novel by the repeated references to a fire that they hold internally. The boy uses this concept to determine the character of his presumed saviour at the novel's climax, and it is clearly the most important factor in someone's moral fibre for him. How do I know you're one of the good guys, he says. Are you carrying the fire? The fire, for the boy, seems to indicate a moral centre or a virtuous spirit, showing that somebody's belief system has not been tainted by the brutal apocalyptic world of the road. The use of fire specifically by McCarthy for this purpose is certainly deliberate and carefully chosen. Fire is an inherently entropic force, consuming fuel by its very nature. Fire provides light and heat for comfort and shelter, but is dangerous unless carefully controlled. Even within the novel, fire is used for destruction as well as preservation. The man kills a threat with a flare gun, this moment pointing out that forces for good can be corrupted and misused for violence. A flare gun is designed as an emergency tool to signal for help, but here it's perverted into an offensive weapon. Likewise, the scene in which the man and the boy stumble upon a cannibal's camp, only to find a newborn baby being roasted over an open fire, shows that domestic applications of fire, i.e. for cooking, have been utterly twisted in this bleak new world. The nature of fire as a consuming force is crucial to its role in the novel as a moral nucleus for the boy. In conclusion, McCarthy's novel is structured around human consumption be that on an immediate physical level, or delving more so into the philosophy of consumption in various contexts. 
The themes of the novel all point to a strong precedent moral. That is to say that overconsumption will be humanity's downfall, and that our current socio-economic system is structured around the misconception that consumption is inherently good.